Assalamualaikum and hello to all viewers. Today I will deliver an opinion speech entitled Technologies are disrupting our relationship among women. A couple of weeks ago, I saw a stranger crying in public. I was in my neighborhood waiting to meet a friend for breakfast. I arrived at the restaurant a few minutes earlier and was sitting on the bench outside. Scrolling through my contact list, a girl maybe 15 years old was sitting on the bench opposite of me, crying into her phone. I heard her say, I know, I know, I know, over and over. What did she know? Had she done something wrong? Was she being comforted? And then she said, Mama, I know. And then the tears came harder. What was her mother telling her? Never to stay up all night again? That everybody fails? Is it possible that no one was on the other end of the, of the call? And that the girl was merely facing a difficult conversation? Mama, I know, she said, and hung up, placing her phone on her lap. I was faced with a choice. I could interject myself in her life, or I could expect the boundaries between us. Intervening might make her feel worse, or be in a or be inappropriate, but then it might ease her pain or be helpful in some straightforward logistical way. An affluent neighborhood at the beginning of the day is not the same as when this one as night is falling. And I was me and not someone else. There was a lot of human computing to be done. It is harder to it is harder to it is harder to intervene than not to, but it is vastly harder to choose to do either than to retreat into the scrolling names of one's contact list or whatever one's favorite eye, distract, eye distraction happens to be. Technology celebrates connectedness but encourages retreat. The phone didn't make me avoid a human connection but it did make ignoring her easier in that moment and more likely by comfortably encouraging me to, com to forget my choice to do so. My daily use of technological communication has been shaping me into someone, into someone more likely to forget others. The flow of water covers rock a little bit at a time and our personhood is carved too by the flow of our habits. <coughs> Psychologists who study empathy and compassion are finding that unlike our almost instantaneous responses to physical pain, it takes time for the brain to comprehend the psychological and moral dimensions of a situation. The more distracted we become, the more and the more emphasis we place on speed at the expense of death, the less likely and able we are to care. Everyone wants his parents or friends or partners undivided attention. Even if many of us, especially children, are getting used to far less, Simon Weil wrote, attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. By this definition, our relationship to the world and to one another and to ourselves are becoming increasingly miserly. Most of our communication technologies began as diminished substitutes for an impossible activity. We couldn't always see one another face to face, so the telephone made it possible to keep in touch at a distance. One is not always home, so the answering machine made a kind of interaction possible without the person being near his phone. Online communication originated as a substitute for telephonic communication, which was considered, for whatever reasons, to burden some of inconvenient. And then texting, which facilitated yet faster and more mobile. These inventions were not created to be improvements upon face-to-face -face communication, but a declension of acceptable if diminished substitutes for it. But then a funny thing happened. We began to prefer, uh, we began to prefer the diminished substitutes. It's easier to make a phone call than to than, than to see some than to see someone in person. Leaving a message on someone's machine is easier than having a phone conversation. You can say what you need to say without a response. Hard news is easier to leave. Hard news is easier to leave. It's easier to check in without becoming entangled. So we began calling when we knew no one would pick up. <coughs> Shooting off an email is easier still because one can hide behind the absence of vocal infection. And of course, there's no chance of accidentally, ca accidentally catching someone. And texting is even easier as the, as the expectation for articulateness is further reduced. And another shell is offered to hide in. Each step forward has made it easier just a little to avoid the emotional work of being present to convey information rather than community. The problem with accepting with preferring diminished substitutes is that over time we too become diminished substitutes. People who become used to saying little become used to feeling little. With each generation, it becomes harder to imagine a future that resembles the present. My grandparents hope I will have a better life than they did, free of war and hunger, comfortably situated in a place that felt like home. But what futures would I dismiss out of hand for my grandchildren? That they are closely refabricated every morning on 3D printers, that they will communicate without speaking or moving? Only those with no imagination and no grounding in reality will deny the possibility that they will live forever. It is possible that many reading these words will never die. Let's assume though that we all have a set number of days to indent the world with our beliefs. To find and create the beauty that only a finite existence allows for. To wrestle with the question of purpose and wrestle with our answer.
we often use technologies to save time but increasingly it either takes to save time along with it or maybe save time less present in human language. I worry that the closer the world gets to automated, the further it gets from our heart. It's not an either of being anti-technology, it's perhaps the only thing more foolish than being unquestioning for technology. But the question of balance that our lives, that our lives hang upon. <coughs> we live in a world made up of love, made up of more of story than stuff. We are creatures of memory more than reminders, of love more than lies. Being attentive to the needs of others might not be the point of life, but, it's, but it is the work of life. It can be messy and painful and almost impossibly difficult, but it is not something we give. It is what we get in exchange for having to die. That's all from me. Thank you.